We were talking. I've asked you fuckers what mid meant. I had to have no. You we're talking about jungle. Basic. No, no. I know now. And then I had to have fucking basic explain. I was like, why is basic a thing? Like you're a basic bitch. Hey there, travelers. You look beat. Come in, take a seat while I tell you about a creepy chocolatey treat that's guaranteed to drive the ghouls crazy with its spine chilling filling the all new united states of paranormal welcome back to the united states of paranormal podcast your weekly road trip through all things cryptid creepy and paranormal that's right you've heard it here ladies and gentlemen this is an episode of chiller filler uh it's been a while but we're back at the chiller filler just sitting around the table talking about things that have happened in our lives and pop culture and maybe even a little bit of spooky stuff for all those reviewers out there that really love it when we don't talk about the spooky this episode is not for you (laughs) oh man you were saying you weren't uh i didn't throw shade i didn't name names uh we will definitely be talking about aspects of our lives and other people's lives in this episode there might not even be a single ghost or cryptid in this episode maybe we should rename our podcast to men who gab just for that one listener that's not going to really do very well for, you know, promotion and advertising. Uh, you're hearing another voice on the microphone right now. Let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. It's me, Logan. Hi, I'm Matt. Bose. And I'm uh, the guest, Dakota Parker. Hey, Hi. Dakota Parker. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do for a living? Not your job job, but your preferred job. Oh, my preferred job, I'm a videographer who films and uh, does photos for events and stuff like that. Um shoot a lot of uh concert videos and like live performances and um i really want to get into the convention scene i've already done like a video for uh, a convention i run a a a facebook page called uh, stormlight productions and um i'm hoping to be posting a lot more stuff there and getting a logo done and um i've known these guys for pretty much too long pretty much my entire life at this point Every um, day just feels like an eternity. We're yeah, keeping know, right? the trend up of me being the only non-technical savvy person in the room when we record here. <laughs> we need you for we need you for your voice and the fact that you never shut the fuck up. Yeah, because that's that's good for a podcast. Yeah, you know what happened to this podcast if it was just me and Brandon? Yeah, it would it would not fist be- fight. <laughs> oh i am also um if you happen to watch the uh the one video episode of this podcast there's uh, two now there's two. Oh, there's Did two. one without you right right um i'm the first one that had all the technical issues so uh clearly i'm not that good at Joke's my job on you, yet the second one had technical issues also oh yeah. cool Joke's okay on all of you our fans are used to technical issues <laughs> um i'm the one who shot that i'm also the guy that you can hear off camera that asks logan for a beer and also yells at him to shut the fuck up so matt can talk because i was holding the camera up to matt and logan cut him off so he could talk about some other unrelated bullshit while another i had the camera our up listeners in the air oh yeah we uh if not anything we are good at cutting each other off oh yeah for sure no that was a that was the the live episode was was brilliant i'm just really sad i couldn't be there at the uh the second live event it was a good um, times had people laughed people cried did they talk about 300 dollars rent oh my God. I, I will never get over that. No. Oh, okay. Fill me in. Fill me in. I need oh, so tea. that means he didn't listen to no, the episode. No, I clearly didn't. So Dakota is leaving now. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I, <laughs> Bye, Dakota. Bye. That's our show. It was good having you on here, Dakota, uh, until you opened your mouth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, see. Outed himself. You brought me here just to look pretty. Uh, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting to see how long you guys could hold that. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Dakota, this is chiller filler since you clearly don't listen to the podcast. No, no, no. This is where we all just get together. And like I said, we uh, originally we pitched it as we were going to talk about our ever changing ideas of the paranormal and uh, other things in spooky culture. And then it has devolved into we talk about whatever the fuck we want to in this episode and can get away with it more than a normal episode because it's a chiller filler episode. It doesn't count. Yeah. yeah, act like we don't get away with a lot in our normal this is our episode. Official, we unofficial more. movie podcast. <laughs> oh, is this what- or whatever's going on? Yeah, I, I don't actually. I need to catch up on a lot of the episodes of the podcast because I am getting way far behind. Um, but isn't it fucking weird? Sorry to cut you off, but isn't it fucking weird that we are at a point now where somebody can get way far behind on episodes of our podcast? Yeah, you are killing it on episodes at least. I think this will be episode thirty six. Fuck if I know. Yeah, you are yeah, brought pretty far. Lot. So what's what's the idea for fifty? Like, are, are planning something kind of big? Dude, we don't that gonna be? That. We don't plan that far ahead. 
We barely plan week to week. Nah, bro. You got to yeah, do something big for 50 and 100. You got to hit those milestones. We're sitting here legitimately. What's, to, what's the date today? 27th. The 27th. And this will be going up the following Wednesday. It's true, though. That's how I, far we plan in advance. I, I came in and uh, I was like, so do I need to like plan for anything? And they're like, no, we don't plan for shit. Just come in and just, just, just talk about whatever. Come as you are. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Just show up and just talk. Try to say, um, is least amount as you possibly can yeah and that's the only thing you can prepare for and i learned that the ball on that one oh all the time, all time. yeah like yeah. so many times an episode yeah yeah i learned about the four curse words in speech class nice yeah um a lot has happened ah! yeah see there's that <laughs> a lot has happened since the last time we've been on open mics uh, uh there's no m on the end of that one so it doesn't count I mean, the last actual episode we recorded was the live show. Yeah, so it's been a while. That was right before Halloween. Yep. Uh, I mentioned ums and uhs, and now I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah, now you're self-conscious and, about it. And over and over and over and over yeah. again. We, as 90s kids in general, have uh, had a very wild, like, last, basically a month worth of time. Because, unfortunately, we lost Batman. Oh, yeah, Kevin Conway passed away. That's a hard uh, one. Ash Ketchum is a fucking Pokemon champion now. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a big deal. Never thought I was going to fucking see that day. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, it actually kind of feels like they're retiring him. Like, I don't know if any of you... That's been God, I fucking hope so. Yeah. Man, well, dude... I am so sick I of him being 10 years old. It, the news broke, <laughs> and I watched the Japanese episode because... I wanted to see yeah, him and it, it that, first of all that it dev, it evolved into basically a Dragon yeah. Ball Z fight by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it was, watched, that animation was incredible. Oh, it was insane. I watched a clip of the, that last part. I am I am 90 percent sure Pikachu temporarily died in that battlefield <laughs> for a brief <laughs> second. Pikachu went to head to head with the Charizard. Pikachu was standing up. Then you all of a sudden you went to Pikachu's vision and it widened, was like fading in and out. And then you just see it like you're, you're almost like you're the camera. All of a sudden it just goes sideways and Pikachu's just in a big white room. And then all of a sudden, all of his, yeah, all, all of his, his homies, homies yeah. from everything yeah. around him. And I'm like, oh, this motherfucker finally died. I was, I was actually really, I was hoping they pull a twist and Ash is just like, not again. I'm not losing another one. And then he pulls out the <laughs> Thunderstone and just bam and evolves him. And he's just like, we're not losing again, Pikachu. But it's just like. It just looks like Pikachu dies. And then Pikachu basically has that moment from like the dirt, the the, the movie, mm -hmm. the kickstart my heart moment where Pikachu got hit by adrenaline, like shocked itself, and a uh, Pikachu just kicked right back up and went for it. Yeah. And uh, it won. One with a headbutt. It just seems like they're going to retire him because like, it makes no sense for him to go to another region after that. Yeah. I start there, so him. that's a get thing. his ass kicked the, by anybody. There has been rumors going on for the past several months that Ash was going to win, which has come forth, and they were talking about making Go the new protagonist of the whole series, which would be great because he kills it. I'm sorry for anybody that doesn't keep up with Pokemon about this, but it's just this is part of our lives. I, I was thinking that they they'd move on to Scarlet and Violet, and they would have some facsimile of the. Uh, protagonist from the game be the new main character. Well, that is Go. like Academy Go student. Is the, you know? Go is the stand-in for the for every for Go. everyone who plays Pokemon Go, Go. Go is doing Go is doing what Ash Ketchum told us he was going to do. And catch them all. We were seven and blatantly lied to us. Yeah. And Go is catching every every fucking Pokemon he sees. Sometimes yeah. he's catching duplicates because he's like, well, this Pokemon has seven different forms. Guess I'm, guess I'm catching seven. Yeah, which is like I. He sees a legendary Pokemon. He's trying to put it in a fucking Pokeball, not Ash, fucking be its Ash, best friend and tell it to go on its way at the end. That's what I loved in like when they got to like uh, Diamond and Pearl and they ran into Paul and he was like this asshole oh, who was just guy like cheats. he he's like oh I, <laughs> it's hurt by he's like he I cheats. it's like I caught this Pokemon but its stats suck so I'm releasing it and Ash is like how could you do that I'm like that's us though that is literally every person who plays this video game is Paul it's like oh this this Pokemon has a shitty ability get rid of it. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to catch a better one or a shiny one. Fun fact, in, it hasn't released in America yet, but in Japan, after the that thing, there's an episode where Ash and Go run into the original Mewtwo. Mm -hmm. Like, the one that knows Ash. The, the one, one that can talk. The first time, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then met him again the second time. And wiped his... Oh, and oh no, he didn't wipe him the second time. He didn't wipe the second time. So he knows him, and they're talking, right? 
and they're this and that, and they're just having a conversation. Please tell me Go just assassinates Go him. fucking <laughs> reaches down and gets a Pokeball, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, all right. He's like, yeah, you're having a conversation with the whatever. I'm putting it in the ball. <laughs> and fucking Mewtwo's like, fucking try me. <laughs> I dare you, bitch. Like, I was going to end the world. What the fuck do you think Ash you're going to do? Try to tag team him to take him out. Like, Ash is trying to help go put this fucker in a Pokeball. What the fuck? <laughs> and, Dude, he... Oh, well, he doesn't remember that. I was about to say, fucking Mewtwo almost murked the entire yeah. human race because of the Pokeball okay, thing. Because fucking Mewtwo just fucking clowns on both of them and just fucks off again. He's just like, all right, bitches, catch you later. Yeah. Because arguably, the only Pokemon that's stronger than Mewtwo would be Arceus. Or yeah. Mew. I mean, they fucking... Yeah. But Mew has a fucking attention deficit. Yeah, yeah. It's not really a fucking problem. I mean, <laughs> like, it could fold your whole life, but all it takes is a bubble going by, and it's like, oh, oh sick. <laughs> and it's gone. Yo, I can do that too. It's not really a problem. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's a thing. And unfortunately, we also lost the OG Green Ranger, White Ranger, Red Ranger, Black Ranger. Yeah. You know, we lost uh, Jason David Frank, uh, unfortunately, to suicide, which was heart wrenching for anyone that's a Power Ranger fan. Basically, anybody that grew up in the '90s, and yeah. also all of his students, because he ran tons of karate schools. Uh, it's just, it's a fucking. I mean, I don't know what to say other than it's an absolute fucking bummer. Yeah, it's a tragedy. Uh, he, like I said, we lost we lost two big staples because, like I said, we lost Kevin Conroy. I don't want to yeah. underplay the fact we lost. Batman, because that is Batman. Batman, 90s animated Batman is the, anytime I read a Batman comic book since I was a child, yeah. uh, that is the voice I hear. I mean, there is there is no, there is no one who can do Batman better than Kevin Conroy, just yeah. period. Yeah. I, we might be biased, but they also, God, he fucking killed. No, just flat out. I, I legit, I, I, every actor who has ever portrayed Batman has never portrayed him like Kevin Conroy. And did. that series did a lot for animation it did. in general. It a beautiful series. Oh, yeah. Just. It's incredible. And then he, he's voiced Batman through all of the Arkham games and yeah. all, almost every animated film. Well, he, got the, he did animated series. He did all the guest appearances on the Superman cartoon. Unfortunately, he did the Killing Joke. Yeah. yeah. He and did then the Killing Joke. He also did Justice League. Justice, Justice League Unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah. Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. The, the man was just a. a he was he Batman played. through and through alternate version of Batman's in different shows too because I'm, in the Brave and the Bold he played one of the weird the Batman that shows up in the red suit I always forget what the fuck that's supposed to be did you ever did you ever see his appearance on Batwoman yes yes you talking about the CW thing yeah Batman his he was the evil Batman, Batman put Superman down yeah yeah evil Batman and then he gets Batman he gets Batman fucking Superman. shocked to death yeah. I was like, oh, y'all got Kevin he, Conroy. It's the one time he ever played a uh, shitty ass uh, show. Action Batman. But to be fair, they had to limit him somehow because the dude no, was very not. old and not. And yeah. he had cancer. I, and yeah. I just his. wish we had a chance to see him play old Bruce Wayne in like a. Uh, uh, like a Batman movie? Beyond. Series. Yeah, that would have been incredible. I think that would have been a fantastic opportunity you know, to have him. Yeah, you know, but. You know, when we talk about some of these classic voice actors like him and Mark Hamill and some of some of these people, something to keep in mind is that there is a lot of new technology where they are simulating people's voices now. Yeah, but I don't want that. Ooh, I, yeah. I know we don't God, want that, but, no. but that could be a thing because like they did that with all the Disney Joe. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, also you got to think about like what's on the subject of voice actors to live action. What's is insane here is uh, we because of the CW shows we have seen things like Mark Hamill. Play, played the trickster. played the trickster live action yeah. in Flash, which was cool because well, he played he him originally. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. But it's right. insane to think that we have that version of him, but we've never seen Mark Hamill get done up in Joker makeup. Yeah, it's still a possibility. It would be nuts to see and hear just to see Mark Hamill done up like the Joker. Like, like honest to God, have be, you ever yeah. you ever thought if they did a live action Killing Joke? And because like the Joker would be old in that movie, so they could absolutely put Mark Hamill in the makeup. Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't feel like the studios would ever do anything like that. I really don't need to see a live action version of the Killing Joke. I I would. I mean, they'd be really fucked up. See, I don't want to see. <laughs> Jim, Jim, I don't want to see Jim. That didn't. Ha that did not fucking happen. Happened in that god awful animated movie that made Batman come off like a fucking 
Groomer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good lord. Like, I've known you since you were 13. Let's bang on a rooftop. That was fucking rough. I went so to fucking gross. To see that like, shit. the killing joke is already fucking gross with, like, the whole, like, yeah. shooting Barbara and then oh. putting her dad in, well, like, his underwear. Just, and always alluded to that the Joker did something sexual to her. Yeah. It was always, it's never there been. Was, point there were some rape said, vibes. It is definitely the naked Polaroids and the, the things well, he and, said to Jim well, Gordon. And, yeah. Well, and also, that story was never canonized, for one. And it is highly hinted that batman killed the joker at the end of the story as well did it yeah because he was waiting for the cops to show up while they were laughing together no, so in the last panels batman is choking out the joker while joker starts laughing and then you just see his laugh dies off and that's the last panels in the comic is batman choking out the joker that's a weird i don't even remember that it's a <laughs> jim yeah. gordon naked in a cage it's just it's it's, it's i don't need to see very it. uncomfortable oh and then you had like those dudes right. like Neil die Gaiman, violently that was Neil Gaiman? I'm pretty sure. I fucking can't remember. I think it is. That's fucking crazy. If that's Neil Gaiman, that's yeah, Neil so Gaiman cool. Neil Gaiman has done Batman comics. I mean, that guy Gaiman's That guy's everything. an incredible author. Have you ever read Sandman? Yes, I've read Sandman. I haven't watched the new show. I haven't. They got either. rid of all of the DC references. Well, yeah, they have to for a lot of the stuff now, yeah. which is... Yeah, I just like you know, said it. Probably it's, wasn't. Neil it's Gaiman. that Lucifer show was technically supposed to be based off Neil Gaiman's Lucifer, but oh. but it was. Hey, I love the show. It don't was a great show, but don't don't. Show. Yeah, exactly. You can't compare the two characters. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. I love the Lucifer show. Don't uh, say that it's Neil Gaiman's Lucifer when it's very clearly not. Great show though, and yeah. that dude killed it as Lucifer, and I would love to see him come back and play Lucifer for the actual Sandman show and do it the the Gaiman the Ga Gaiman way. But yeah, uh, they got a female Lucifer. For yeah. the Sandman show, is that but Mark Hamill voice? Character? Yeah, the girl who was in Game of Thrones, Wendell and Christie. Yeah, yeah, I don't know her name. Mark Hamill voiced uh, oh, the pumpkin. Uh, yeah, and Patton Oswalt did the did the, the crow, name. which was like a new character for the oh, show. Wow. I haven't watched the show yet either. Yeah, I've, I've it's been... very different from the comic. Book. So, like in the comic book, you know how Sandman is like very put together he always knows what's kind of going on and he's in control of every situation uh -huh. in the show they put him in like like when he's doing his uh mental battle against the demons one he's going up against lucifer and that he's not going up against uh ethereal's uh lieutenant and in that one, he's like getting on his knees and weak before he comes up with his idea of being hope. Like he shows him like losing the battle where if, if you go through the comic books, he's like, oh, he has a counter for everything. Yeah, because mm. the whole thing is it's his domain. And everything. Yeah. So it's yeah. very it's very different from the actual uh, comic book. OK. Um, Alan Moore wrote Killing Joke. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alan Moore. Um, just to swing back to the Tommy thing, um, just while you were talking about y'all been busy, you got busy and made a, a new Instagram page. Did you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, it, uh, it's not something, it's not something I talk about on here a lot. It's not something I talk about like in my personal social medias at all either. I have a, uh, I have an Instagram that is the wild force new frontier, which is basically I hate saying the word fan fiction. <laughs> I mean, it is, uh, but it's uh, it's basically my own page where me it's and not my porn. my teammate is absolutely not porn. Uh, <laughs> some of the people that have messaged me have absolutely wanted to be porn. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's people that have tried to force kinks on me <laughs> in there. I just I'm not porn. Uh, different strokes, different folks. You do you. Um, that's a missed opportunity. But uh, basically, that's what a Power Ranger force that does porn would be. Let's not. Let's not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, basically, I have my own my own page with my uh, my artist friend uh, Informity, um, where I make I come up with concepts for Rangers for a team that I am fond of that I grew up really liking. Uh, I'm saying oh, so much. I grew up on MMPR, like basically everybody here did. Power Rangers. I mean, it's a show that changed everything and still is to this day i mean we're coming up on 30th anniversary and the sentai it's based on is on its 45th i think yeah um 46 45th was in kaiger yeah incredible legacy people that know of a show 
absolutely incredible legacy. It switched hands multiple times. It's gone from Saban to Disney, back to Saban to Hasbro. Little, uh, one of the kings of the 90s. Yeah, and it's, like I said, it's still going today. The fact that something was established and it's a show and it's on its 30th season is insane. But that wasn't m- the one that stuck out the most to me as a kid, Wild Force did. So I built something around Wild Force. And I have my own Rangers. We're 18 Rangers strong design-wise. We have full drawn out concepts and stuff uh about 2500 something followers so i'm in the ranger community pretty much all the time i put in a lot of work there as long like with the podcast and everything but i i do that that's my like side thing uh have action figures and all that jazz so when i got up the morning that this that 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 news had broke uh my social media is i constantly see tommy pictures and stuff because this community worships at the altar of tommy oliver yeah uh anybody Jason knows david me, frank the yeah. green ranger and uh anybody that knows me knows that i've never been a tommy fanboy i've bitched about tommy so much because i'm like the, it's just how many different green ranger action figures am i going to get while i'm waiting for other teams to get stuff yeah. because it, it it is what it is he is he's like the mickey lifeblood. yeah he's like the mickey mouse yeah. of power rangers he's, he's lifeblood he's been back to be he was the original evil ranger the green ranger when that shit showed up as a kid it shook you your foundation this dude had the access to the power chamber he one point kicked in the back door which we didn't even know existed on the megazord and laid hands on the whole team threw him out their own megazord and just just talking about his overlap with not only the community but the outside community as well like oh absolutely this, this guy was so insanely popular that they created a live action trailer that used him as lord for dracon for for the yeah, comic yeah. book he he also um he also starred in a bunch of uh like fan made projects. He was also in the the most recent uh, Power Rangers movie as like a cameo uh, character we'll along talk with about that in a second. Kimberly. He did not like that. Well, of course not. But um and then also the last thing that he did, which I'm so happy that it's in post production and it actually got to get finished. Yeah. I'm so sad he didn't get to see it, but I'm really excited to see it. Is uh he he did a Power Rangers esque uh movie. I think it's called Legend of the White Dragon. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It looks it looks his suit looks really really cool and, and it's like with a bunch of other ranger actors are in it too yeah like, and it's or and it's just, and it's like an homage to Power Rangers and it's it, I'm so excited to actually see it whether or not it's good it's I I'm I'm really happy that that got to get finished his daughters in it too um oh, but that's really yeah that's really special uh but yeah he showed up he was the original Green Ranger he was the bad guy there was the good guy and then. A lot. Uh, there is a surprising amount of people that don't know that Power Rangers is original. Power Rangers was seventy five to seventy percent footage from a Japanese show. Anytime they were in the suit, basically was Japanese footage. They spliced with American actors. They were saving so much money by doing this, mm-hmm. and it was such a weird concept, but it worked so well. Especially with a bunch of kids that don't clearly see, but like, hey, that's weird. The Yellow Ranger kind of looks like a dude in that suit, but it's clearly a woman. Because in the Japanese footage, the Yellow Ranger was a dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why that suit didn't have a skirt and everything. But uh, at the same time, like, the um, Power Rangers just to, like, Power Rangers became such a mega hit in the 90s that they made so much money. They started splicing in, like, footage from other Power Ranger series oh, into the Mighty yeah, Morphin series. Exactly. Like the like Tommy as the White Ranger. Like he he literally swapped from green to white. And then because the green was in the original Mighty Morphin. And then they took the White Ranger from a completely different yeah, series and brought him in. And then again, these people made so much money yeah, on Power Rangers. They not, made their own Mighty Morphin movie. He was not supposed to come back. Yeah. They he was going to be the main character in VR Troopers. But when they removed Tommy Oliver from the show, literal kids in America, this is when Power Rangers had so much power that the whole highway in uh, L.A. closed down to go because it was so backed up for people trying to get to the, a live show yeah. where they were all at. It would hit worldwide news. The whole highway was at a standstill for Power Rangers. Yeah, Pokemon and Power Rangers was wild. But he uh, When he left the show, literal kids stopped eating school lunches. All over the nation, like they like they were trying to. This was before the internet was like a big thing, and these kids were just in solidarity, be like, "No, fuck it, Tommy's gone, I'm done, yeah, <laughs> I'm I done." Quit. So he was he was shooting VR troopers, which is also Saban's thing. Yeah, it's a and Saban was like, "Yo, dog, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to come back." And he was like, "What?" And we're like, "Yeah, look, we're gonna take 
this uh, White Ranger from uh, Die Ranger, which isn't this. It's why that suit didn't look like it matched or anything. Mm-hmm. It's why, and it was why you had a tiger with dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, they're like, we're going to take this and we're going to splice that. We're going to three times splice this shit. <laughs> we're going to get you in here. Uh, we'll actually put the Rangers in suit, the actors in suits for once. Yeah. And everything. We'll shoot our own footage. So we can bring you back, which is great and everything. I mean, it's sad that we lost out on actual Die Ranger suits for the rest of the team because those suits were amazing. Yeah, they were. But it brought him back so they could keep him there because it, kids love Tommy Oliver. And like, let me tell you what, those kids grew up into adults that still, like I said, worship the altar of Tommy Oliver. Like, but Power Rangers as a whole was just insane because when it came out, uh, no new no stations or affiliates wanted to air it because they're like this is stupid this is spliced footage this and that nobody's gonna want this so to get it off the ground uh saban and the chick that was running fox kids and stuff at that time was like listen if you air our show we will give you a cut of the toy merchandising sales each affiliate they went to you will get this percentage of this and so at that point they're like oh whatever if anything we'll get a little money off this right Mm -hmm. that shit blew up so insane once it started to air that you couldn't keep power rangers anything on the shelf to where all these like local hometown affiliates of like fox and everything Mm -hmm. their whole station was funded for years off of just merchandise sales from power rangers and it was just that small percentage yeah and they were like oh what do we do next and saban's like well, it's a good thing we've got 15 plus years of yeah. <laughs> whatever the fuck we want with, and there'll be a new season in Japan every year. We'll just cherry pick what we want to get, <laughs> and we'll go from there. A lot of people don't know the original person that tried to do this was Stanley himself. Like eight years before that, he tried to pitch the exact same thing because he loved Super Sentai, because the whole reason megazords became a thing at all over in japan was the japanese spider-man show mm-hmm. that stanley helped produce Wait, that, that show had the first megazord that was the and this is why this happened the like the transforming megazord happened because they were like the show's doing great in japan it's the show where spider-man literally his thing would show up and he'd have his little wrist thing that he'd hit oh, yeah. to transform and his saying was like i am the emissary of hell spider-man spider-man, spider-man. <laughs> And uh, he so when shit got real for him, he also they're like, okay, well, all the all we can sell is the one Spider-Man toy, because that's it. Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, Stanley and them were like, well, uh, what about if Spider-Man has to fight something big? How about he summons a giant ship called the Marveler that transforms into Leopardon, which is a giant robot? And so Spider-Man and Marvel were directly responsible for the transforming fucking ship helping the Sentai guy. Like, he goes, sits and pilots, and Spider-Man's piloting a giant fucking robot, Mm -hmm. which ended up, that's how Stan Lee learned about Super Sentai. And he wanted to take Sun Vulcan, which was a three-member team Super Sentai, Mm -hmm. and do the exact same thing. He wanted to take it over to America, put American actors in it, and splice the footage, and he went around with it trying to pitch it with the same lady. She worked, she was Stanley's boss at the time. So when that all fell through and they abandoned it, when Saban came to her with Super Sentai footage, she was like, I know the Super Sentai. And Saban was like, What? And she was like, Yeah, me and Stanley try to pitch this. And he was like, Well, I also am trying to pitch this, but I've also got dinosaur themed team. And she was like, Fuck, kids do love them dinosaurs. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> And basically, that's the only reason it happened is because the dinosaur motif, because Sun Vulcan's whole motif is they had a multicolored volleyball that they would get together and fucking smack together and oh, fucking... Yeah, it was a little too goofy. Yeah, but like dinosaurs, kids fucking love... No fucking... If any kids love dinosaurs, 90 kids fucking love oh, yeah. fucking... Oh, yeah, dinosaurs. we ate that shit up. So they're like, listen, it's robots, it's dinosaurs, it's karate. All those original actors weren't picked because they're fantastic actors. They were all picked because they were actual gymnasts. Yeah. Yeah. Or people that are martial artists. Yeah. Professionally. Hip hop Aikido. They're like, listen, we cannot afford stuntmen and actors. So we're going to need you to be both. Both. Yeah. <laughs> it's aware, like, it was, I think it was, uh, I think it was Austin St. John got wounded at the live show doing like a backflip off a platform and he fucked his leg up and after that they're like listen when we do the live shows it's no longer going to be you guys we'll put somebody else in those suits to go out in the, in the thing and that's will be it because they only did the one live show yeah. which was the one that shut down the highway in california and he hurt himself and they're like we can't have you doing that now because you guys are 
Our they life had a our, very yeah. rough film schedule, so they could not make time for people to be injured. Yeah, no, yeah, that's hell why no. We ended up losing the original Red Ranger, Yellow Ranger, and Black Rangers yeah. because pay disputes because they thought they were being treated unfairly, which and more, more than likely they, they were. absolutely were. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, the actress that played Trini passed away in a car accident, I believe. Shortly after, uh, around a few years later, but I think it was after she filmed one of the Crow movies. She was in one of them, mm -hmm. and she passed away in a car accident. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, he was he was the really like the go to because not only did he was he those two like flagship Rangers, then he was also Zeo Red, and then he became. Turbo Red and Turbo almost killed Power Rangers as a whole because kids were like, if I want transforming cars, I'll watch fucking Transformers. Yeah. What are you thinking? And he dipped at the end of that. And then years later. And don't forget the second uh, Power Ranger movie was the Turbo movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you can't. And that stopped that. those from being made. Yeah. For yeah a that. long time. And they're non. And that was a non canon movie because they redid their origin story in the first. In like the next yeah. week after the movie premiered. From yeah. One of the more popular seasons, which yeah. was Dino Thunder. Yeah. He came back for Dino. Oh, Thunder. no. Is even it? before that. Oh, you gotta, came back. You got to remember Forever Red and oh, yeah, stuff came, like that. He always yeah. came back. Now, like let's, cameo episodes. Let's be clear. He clearly had a favorite ranger he played <laughs> verbatim. Oh, like, yeah. He did not, like, you would not see him at a con toting around his turbo helmet or his no. Zero Red helmet. Homeboy was there. He was the Green he Ranger. He was the Green Ranger. Or well, White. To be clear, he seldom even fucked with that. Yeah. He just, he loved the Green Ranger, which, like, let's, I mean, you can't default him for that. Oh, I mean, yeah. That, oh, hell no. You were evil, then you were badass. And honestly, that was, and, and in kids television shows to even have a multi-part episode basically yeah, that was, was like a five that parter was, that was yeah. kind of crazy just to begin with you're renting five also, different vhs's from blockbuster you want to know what the fuck happened to <laughs> have like a a typical good guy role being filled by a bad guy like you have a ranger who is evil and who dominates all of the original rangers only to turn good and then become part of them that was unheard of in storytelling well, on top of that, think about this too think about something that's interesting how long how many episodes do you think were before uh was it green with evil or yeah green with, yeah, evil. Green with evil before they did that five part or before they introduced time no, they were barely ever it like, like the day they didn't, yeah yeah it was like episode six introduced tommy all yeah yeah and, and it's like they, kid shows didn't do multi-parters yeah, well, also on top of that homeboy didn't just show up and lay hands on him while he was in suit Kimberly walks up to him in school and she's like, I know you're the Green Ranger. And he was basically like, what of it, bitch? <laughs> he got up in her face and he was like, and you're worthless. And he was like, oh, he's not only physically kicking their ass. And I will murk you in that bathroom. Like, he's, yeah, he's like, I'm, he's sitting emotional, wounding people to fucking murder right there. Like, he hurt Kimberly with his words. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like, I could, he's like, I could just beat you right here, right now. He's like, by the way. <laughs> I got lunch. I'll catch you in I'm the suit, bitch. I'm gonna go get bitch. some cafeteria, cafeteria square pizza, and I'll meet you out in Angel Grove, and I'll smack you around for a little bit. Yeah. And then I'll let you get your big robot out, and I'll smack it around too. Let's go to you recess. Think safe because you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> These hands are E for everyone. And then later after that, I'm gonna go on down to your command center. I'm gonna go beat that old man in the tubes ass too, and I'm gonna do your yeah. robot dirty. <laughs> yeah, and you're in your jive talking robot. I'm gonna yeah. trash his ass too. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> My space mommy live in a dumpster, and she told me I got whoop your ass. She got, she got pointy titties. I ain't even seen that before. She lives on the moon. Man, it was just, it was jarring. Like, it, it, it just, like, everything he did while you were a kid just, like, stunned you. Like, he showed up, he was green, he could do everything they could do, he'd go everywhere they could go and cause problems. And then he shows up, they get a Megazord out, and you're like, okay, what's his robot going to be? He don't even hop in his robot. No. He sits on top he of hops in their robot. a fucking flute. dagger that's also a flute. And, and someone's just, Godzilla. And just phones it in from there. He's just like, I'll push a few buttons, you're going to get your ass whooped, and I'm not even going to get up in there and steer yeah, the and thing. Godzilla's going to kick your ass, and I'm going to get in your ro robot and throw you out of it. And, and then just, trash your robot. It's all blowing your little kid brain it's because you're just like not only is there dinosaur robots now now we got dragon robots we got flutes that stab people <laughs> it was just like because like up to that point it had a it had a basic formula they fight the she goes make my monster grow they summon the megazord they kill the thing and then they they learn a lesson at yeah. the end and then we this guy shows up and he's like 
Okay, I'm gonna trash your team. I'm gonna trash your robot. I'm gonna trash your team out of your robot. <laughs> yeah, we and then I'm gonna get and, and then I'm gonna steal all your powers. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. steal all your powers and beat your ass. It's like you know what the lesson is at the end of this story. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> they never even don't trust him. new kids. <laughs> they never even really beat him. They just break the sword that's controlled. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, they're like, oh, God, how do we deal with him? Summon a Megazord. And he's like, I'm just going to get big and beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, no. The it, All it did as a kid is teach you that if a new kid moves in and he's wearing a primary color, he's probably evil. I'm about to kick yeah. the shit out of you. <laughs> like, I don't know about Simmy. He's wore green two days in a row and he moved here from Arkansas, dog. Yeah, it was so good. And like I said, and then all like they had the other had... kids with a pump. <laughs> no. Oh God, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> then all this like, all these kids fucking just started loving him instantly, and it caused real beef on set because the original Power Ranger leader, Austin St. John, the Red Ranger, and him did not get along at all. Yeah, and only to add like salt to the wound after he thinks Austin St. John thought he was finally done with Jason David Frank, he's gone. He comes back by popular demand. Popular demand, and then has Zordon say this famous line. Tommy shows up and like, it's good to have you back, Tommy. And Zordon's like, Welcome back, Tommy. You're now the leader of the Power Rangers. <laughs> and Austin Jason's just sitting over there like, he the what? <laughs> the fuck? I put in three years, Zordon. <laughs> this motherfucker was here for five episodes <laughs> and then like phoned it in for the other ones because his counterpart in the Japanese footage was literally dead. <laughs> Zordon's like I watched this dude beat your ass and trash my giant robot. He's the leader now. Deal with it. But Jason, look at his suit. It's so cool. <laughs> hey, 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 Jason. Okay, fight him for it. <laughs> yeah, fight him for it, pussy. Uh, I would zord him, but I'm just not feeling like. Let's it. see you. Let's see you try it. He beat all five of you. Let's see you fucking try him. I don't see you having cool shoulder armor. Yeah, where's your dragon? The only sword? reason he put him in charge was because Zordon was fucking scared. <laughs> he whooped my ass, Jason. <laughs> he came in my home. <laughs> He trashed my house, Jason. You didn't see and, what he did to Alpha. And you weren't here. I watched. You weren't here to help me, Jason. I don't feel safe anymore. <laughs> I gave him a new suit. Um, I bribed him, Jason. <laughs> Just deal with it, please. And like I said, he, he did his thing. He came back multiple times. And then years later, we got the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic book that Boom Studio has just killed. It was amazing. And like, it's, it's following. It was like right after green yeah, yeah. that comment picked up like right after green evil happened tommy's new to the team still questioning himself etc cetera, etc cetera. and the first big story arc we get to is this this black dragon zord shows up it's not what you think it is it looks like a mech suit more than anything mm -hmm. shows up and it whoops their ass for a little while and it goes away and then it find you find out that it was like oh it was being piloted from another dimension and then it like pans to that dimension and you see a ranger sitting on a throne that looks like the white ranger and the green ranger had a bastard love child. And you're like, who the fuck? And then a motherfucker takes off his helmet and it is alternate dimension. Tommy. Tommy Oliver that was like, yo, dog, you know, green with evil, how it ended in a fire parter. What if it yeah, didn't I end? Five parts here. Didn't that, that also happened before they even met Tommy, didn't it? What if I double down on the evil when, part? When, when they got attacked by the black dragon. No, Tommy was already part of the team. He was yeah. already part of the team. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's been a while since I read that. Yeah, comic. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he, he was, was still part of the team. Because it's basically our Mighty Morphin dimension. Yeah. And then it's like, what if that shit went wrong yeah. and, and it, he killed all of them? Yeah. It yeah. came at a, and Rita. <laughs> it came at a time that wasn't. It was also like emotionally not great for Tommy that story arc happening because at that time he was questioning himself anyways because he's just a new part of the team. Yeah. And he's still trying to be like, why would they trust me? I was kicking the shit out of them two weeks ago, and then all of a sudden it's like now they're dealing with alternate him that fucking snuffed the majority of them in his timeline. He's like, they're really not gonna like me now. Yeah, yeah, because because now they know I can end them. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so, but um, just all these people that tuned in for a paranormal podcast. This is chiller filler. Uh, we apologize, but these this stuff is our lifeblood, so it affects yeah, this our is, lives one hundred. This is this is well, I'm obviously new here, but. This is this is what we do outside of the the paranormal stuff, or they do outside of the paranormal stuff. Like I, I really wanted you to talk about the the Mighty Morphin and, and like that whole aspect of like at least your life outside of this. He is like I said, he he is. But what I was originally saying, or we before we segued off in the whole history of Power Rangers, was that I woke up 
and I saw all these pictures of him on there and I just went right to cooking breakfast because it was a normal day for me. It just like, it was a bunch of Tommy posts. I just seen pictures. I didn't read them. I was just like every other day I see a bunch of Tommy posts because the fandom loves them. And then Kayla comes sits down in the kitchen and she was like, did you see uh, the one of the Power Rangers died? And I was like, then it hit me like instantly. I was like all those pictures. I was like, I was like, I just saw a bunch of pictures of Jason David Frank. And I was like, but that's just, so I pull up my phone and I start reading it. And it's just like, he's, I see that he has died. And instinctively, I'm like, okay, something must have happened. Uh, it must have been a car accident or some kind of accident on set because your your head never instantly goes, especially when it's somebody that you see that's always very positive and engaging with the fandom and everything. Yeah, and he's always like, been such a pleasant. It's unthinkable. Yeah. And you're so you're just like, and then I open up the first article and I read it and I just, it fucking floors me. I'm just like. There wasn't a lot of details, and it was just that the actor that Jason David Frey had committed suicide. He had taken his own life, and the rest of the day was just uh, hectic, to say the least, because uh, I just watch a whole community that I deal with on the regular just come completely undone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see, I follow all these different actors uh, that have been in there that have all been impacted by him, because frankly, without the original without the original team there would not none of these people would have been here and so many of them have worked with him because he's come back so many times and 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 just again when we're talking about his impact on the community and every time there was a crossover episode and he came back it generated so much buzz that even people who did not give a shit about power rangers anymore who didn't care about any of the original teams they would watch those episodes just to see how they worked him back in and they were always just incredible they developed a morpher in the tv show that transferred into the comic books that a uh later on like a, a graphic novel basically about old man tommy that the last special that he came back for they made a special morpher specifically for him so he could be whatever one of his yeah. rangers he wanted to be yeah. the master morpher yeah he could swap between power rangers like, on top like I said on top of seeing the fandom i'm seeing all these actors because not only even actors that he never worked with knew him because the con circuits all these actors go to all these cons and he's always there and he's always pro- he's always promoting Power Rangers. He's always promoting uh, little micro things on YouTube or the comic books like Dakota mentioned. They had him dress up for a commercial for a comic book. How how many commercials for comic books have you seen in your More fucking life? Yeah. Any other character. He was the lead spokesperson for Power Rangers. He's the one who most people associate with. For power and he was oh. he was so fucking nice to so many people and that's why it was so fucking jarring to people is because unfortunately people don't have the a lot of people don't have the ability to fathom that just because somebody is positive that they are they are struggling have you ever did you ever if you're ever a fan of lincoln park you know the the lead singer also committed suicide yep. did you ever see the video that his wife put up and she said it, it, it was titled this is what depression looks like and it was it was a video of the lead singer of Linkin Park. I think it's Chad Krogan. I think no, that's his no, name. No, that's Nickelback. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, Chad, Chad Krogan's Who Nickelback. am I thinking of? Chester Bennington. Yeah. Chester Bennington. I'm so sorry. <laughs> fucking Nickelback. Holy oh, shit. I'm sorry. I knew it was a C something. You're fine. You're fine. Well, anyway. You have pissed off so many people. <laughs> well, see, that was, I was actually hesitating to even say the name because I wasn't it's sure. It's all right. I needed a jolt of fucking levity for a yeah, second yeah, yeah. there because it was um, fucking hurt. Oh, but, it looks a hate mail yeah yeah yeah. like you get mail anyway (laughs) anyway um but the video is of him just like the night before he committed suicide of him just playing with his kids smiling and laughing like there was nothing wrong and it that that's what it was titled she wanted everyone to see this was the night before no one could have thought that he was going to do that the next morning like he was it just, he everything seemed great like for said, him people have a pro- a lot of people have a problem with um like i said seeing somebody that is positive uh that's engaging that seems happy and a lot of people say things like oh he had it all he had fans he had this it's not something that people are doing deliberately he didn't do it to spite anybody he didn't it, it is depression is a lifelong battle the dude did not give up the dude did not just quit he didn't make a choice to hurt his family and stuff on no. purpose. The dude just lost a fight. Yeah. It happens. He, it was a spur of the moment. 
sort of thing. He it, he lost. It was a moment of weakness. It's and fucking just, brain chemistry. Yeah. It is something that's in his wires, and it it, it could have been anything and everything. Yeah, and it, behind the scenes, like you have no idea what this dude had to go through, what he was going through, just what he struggled with on a day to day basis, and it's like just like I have I have only ever heard. Like, I, I've heard that sometimes he could be difficult to work with on set, but when it came to the community of Power Rangers, to the fans and everything, the dude was was like a saint oh, born again. Like absolutely. He was one of the nicest people that you could have ever he met. He helped save, during COVID, the peak of COVID, he helped save so many comic book stores by starting a program to where he was getting other rangers and stuff to go to these stores that were completely fucked with when they're being closed down and stuff and be like listen we as these people need to support these people because without them we would have never been a thing he was going to comic book stores he was bringing his own merchandise signing them and getting people to come and just giving the stuff to the comic book stores to sell to people mm -hmm. and just doing an initiative to where it was like look rangers we need to get out there we need to go to these comic book stores, go to your local comic book stores, do appearances, do them, don't, don't charge these people for these appearances. So these places can stay open because without the fans and without the places that were hubs for fans, we wouldn't be here. And he did that. He, they like, they calculated up like how much like of his personal money that he basically just gave away for that and everything. And it was outstanding. And like I said, he helped so many people doing that. And that's why so many people were reeling when that news hit. Um, unfortunately, people also lash out uh, when they're upset and look for somebody to blame, which isn't always the case. And unfortunately, it was fucking it was horrendous to watch the amount of people that started attacking his immediate family, especially his wife, because unfortunately, during the process of this, like I said, almost a year ago, they had he had lost his stepdaughter who had also taken her life. Um, he his they did. There was a divorce filed for, and she has said that the divorce had been taken off the table, that they had come to terms and worked on it. But unfortunately, TMZ put out a thing that said that they had an argument at the hotel where he took his life and everything. So people took to the internet and started attacking this woman that has not only lost her daughter to suicide, who literally not even 12 hours ago lost her husband to suicide and immediately start attacking her and saying this is your fault i hope you're happy stuff like it should have been you and not him mm -hmm. which is fucking horrendous you're sitting here hurting because somebody took their lives you could very well be pushing another person to do the same she is already hurting she already has pre-existing hurt from somebody else doing the exact same thing if you are a fan of this man and all the things he has done and all the things he's instilled to you throughout your life do you think that's what he would you wanted you to do? Hell no. Do you think he would he would want you to attack the person that he loved more than anything? Do you think the mother of his children, to where his daughters can see it, and just like, no, no, that's not the leg the legacy that this dude wanted to leave behind is not a legacy of that he gave up. He didn't, and it's definitely not a legacy of harass people. That's not that's not his thing. That's just it's fucking it was when it was hard to watch when times got tough. For Jason David Frank, he put all of his energy into being like positive, like positively outreaching to the community and supporting people who were also hurting and trying to just make things better for everyone. Yeah. Um, like the with the comic book store, it, it it the dude was an incredible beacon of positivity just in general. And it's like to see people who were fans of this guy, and again, I know it's like it, it's a you just do it to lash out because you're hurting too. But it's like imagining being a fan of somebody who did as many great things and as many positive things for a community as he did. And to think that that's in any way what he would want is, is mind boggling. Yeah. And that's what, uh, seeing the fans, uh, lashing out and other fans just being hurt and people posting, like they don't know what they're going to do now. And just seeing like I just so many people like struggling and like not like moderately struggling, like people like breaking down hardcore. I was just like, like I was you, trying to you used an example earlier that was fucking brutal. 
Yeah, so. and that, and that's not something I really like. I what I ended up doing is I tried, like I sat there that whole first day. I just sat there thinking about everything, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "It started with like I was going to make a post on my page. Uh, I was gonna, I was like, I'll, I'll get a picture and I'll make a post." And I was like, "But I was like, what does that really do?" Um, so I was like, "I've got to do." I thought about the comic book store thing that he did, and I was like, "There's people that right now need." something anything to distract them any or any somebody to talk to so i talked to him for mighty and i was like listen i want to make a page called the ranger reach out i was like could you make me a picture with the green candle of power uh people that aren't power ranger fans won't know but how they took away tommy's power is there was a candle that was green and basically rita lit it and when it was done he was gone i saw a lot of people posting pictures of that candle extinguish and being like he's gone and i was just like i want to change that imagery i don't want it to be a sad negative thing i was like as long as all the fans are out there dude's not gone what he's done is still here the lessons he taught you the lessons the show taught you are still here so i was like i want that candle burning i want i want the candle there i want his coin there forever burning it was like We, the fans, can keep it going. His message doesn't have to go away. We keep it going. And I made our motto for the page, uh, something Zordon always said, was like, made the power protect you always. I made our page's logo, be the power that protects. I don't want to see negativity. I don't want to see people attacking people. I don't want to see people thinking they have to give up because their hero lost a fight. So I did it. I made a page and then I just made a post and then it just, uh, in true Logan fashion, I did not, uh, I did not fathom how quickly it was going to blow up and quick, like my whole day, my whole next day was just message after message after message. People telling me stories about how he helped or tell me about their struggles. And so I was like, okay, uh, I put a link in the bio for crisis, international crisis hotlines. And I was making, I make good morning post and good night post, uh, just being, or stories being like, I put music to the track and I just say like, if you find yourself struggling in the night, um, please reach out to somebody. And if you feel like you're losing that fight, please call 988, which is the suicide prevention hotline, the crisis center. And if you're an international person, please, our link in the bios will take you to a list of international crisis centers. And I got overwhelmed by the amount of people messaging. So I started a discord and I was like, if you want to be in a community where you have somebody to talk to at all times, just go to this discord. And then the discord blew up, but it really helped take a lot of the weight off of like, yeah. there's so many people that had really beautiful stories, but there was also an, a, a, like a, just a huge number of people that were like, I don't think I want to keep doing this. And so I would have to tell them like, listen, I'm here to talk to you, but I am not. You are one person. I was like, yeah. If you feel like the, 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 that this is that bad, please call this number. Yeah. Just to be something, just like they, a lot of people feel more comfortable just talking to somebody via typing than actually calling. But I'm being like, I'm here for you and this community is here for you. But if you feel like you're losing a fight, please call this number. And it's just gotten bigger and bigger. And, uh, which is why that Discord was so important. They they needed yeah. a place yeah, and, where they could talk it's to blown each up. other. They've they've I've I've put some admins in there, and they all created a bunch of different rooms. There's even a meme room and everything. And like I've had people message me and be like, "I thank you for this," and like he would like this. And I'd like at the end of the day, I didn't do it for clout or any shit like that. I just I fucking really just felt like the the community as a whole needed some place to turn because where it was going was nowhere productive fast. There was people that were detrimentally sad, people that were detrimentally fucking angry, and I really just don't want Homeboy's legacy to be twisted. Because like I said, the dude didn't give up. The dude didn't choose to hurt anybody. He just lost a fight. And if you want to check that out, that's at ranger underscore reach underscore out on instagram uh the discord's open for anybody uh and like i said if you live in the united states 988 is the crisis hotline the suicide prevention hotline if you are struggling out there call talk they're not there to judge you they are trained professionals if you're just having a bad day i mean like that's what they're there for that's what it's made for these people are out there to help you not to judge you unfortunately another thing in this country that is 
poorly, poorly treated is men's mental health. There are so many men I've talked to in this last week that say things like, I don't want to sound weak or I don't want people to make fun of me. Now we got the highest statistic, man. Uh, I'm, th- th- that is a thing. That is 100% a thing. But uh, reaching out does not make you weak. If anything, it makes you strong because you took that step despite what you think people might think of you. The, like, the strength to swallow your pride and to, to ask for help when you need it the most is, is probably the strongest thing you can do. I just, if the page stops at least one person from doing something, uh, having a permanent solution to something that doesn't need it, it's worth it. Absolutely. 100%. I, uh, I know these guys probably can say that I look tired. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's been, like I said, it's been hectic uh, dealing with it and everything. But it, like I said, if it can help one person, it is absolutely worth it. And I guarantee you, if Jason was still alive and it was another ranger in the community that had done this, he probably would have done exactly He would have beat you to the punch, yeah. more than likely. Absolutely. So, like I said, I'm not going to say that I was a Tommy Oliver fan. <laughs> No, you don't have to. People this table knew that I shit on Tommy Oliver all the time just because I was like, there's other Rangers I wanted to see do it. But like the dude was part of the lifeblood of this series. He was Uh, the Beatles of the Power Rangers. It was a beautiful tribute that was done online by the original Dragon Ranger over in Japan. Oh, God, yes. And it was fucking gorgeous. And he was like, he was just saying like the basically what we're saying. He's like, the Dragon Ranger will always live on. And. That's true. Once a, like, and he, he even didn't once he, a ranger, always a ranger. Yeah, exactly. Which isn't even a thing over there. No. He took an American That's, saying and 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 yeah, that it. was an absolutely beautiful tribute he did, and he, he literally didn't even have to do that. Yeah. It was just so sweet and but incredible. Most importantly, like, please don't lash out at people. Like I cannot even fathom what that that poor woman is going through right now, and his daughters and having to watch their mom get torn apart like that because of news outlets like TMZ. Please don't take your news from fucking TMZ. They're yeah, fucking yeah. garbage people. They just they live off clicks and downloads and spreading shit like that. That that is a hive of negativity. Those guys, those guys get paid to cause problems. They didn't. Lo- they didn't wake. Let's put it this way: those pieces of shit did not wake up and feel bad that somebody had took in their life. They woke up and said, "That's news. Look, story. Yeah. clickbait. Yeah, we have yeah. content. We can make money on this." And that's a fucking travesty. The internet is both a blessing and a curse, unfortunately. Yeah. You have um, vultures everywhere that are waiting for somebody to have a moment of weakness so they can take advantage of it. Like I said, uh, I know this isn't spooky content, but this is this is not only just a spooky show. This is a people dealing with lives and stuff. The chiller fillers, just us talking about day to day. These characters, these actors, were a very important part to us. Um, yeah, it's it's important to all of us. It's important to address mental health. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like these. This was literally a character who we saw every week for years of our lives, and was honestly a very instrumental part in developing who we are as adults. Without and these characters, we would be different people. Kevin yeah, and Conroy they, and, they, and, they and Jason David Frank impact us into our adulthood, uh, and it is it is a jarring feeling to mourn somebody. That you never knew. That you've never met yeah. in a person. like Because I, 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 like, no matter what, they were a part of our lives every Saturday morning or yeah. if we owned like a VHS or, or anything like that. I've like, had relatives pass away that hit me less hard. Like it just, yeah. it, I, every, like my house, like I said, is a big nerd shrine. I can't turn a corner without seeing something right now that just kicks me in the balls emotionally. Yeah. And, and it's just. And it's just, it. Losing, losing a part of your childhood, it's not just like growing up that you lose a part of your childhood. It's like realizing that like people from your childhood have finite existences. And it's, it, it's like that the Tommy Oliver and Jason David Frank will always live on in Power Rangers history as well as the history of what that, that man has done oh, for the community. Around forever. Same thing with, with Kevin Conroy. Like these people have played a role in in just the history of of fiction and like there is no replacing these people as the legends that they are for and, our younger listeners to give you a bit of context because we are all older y'all didn't have saturday morning cartoons yeah <laughs> we literally would get up at six in the morning mm-hmm. to watch these characters. Yeah, you want to talk about <laughs> you want to talk about mental health. Talk about uh, seven year old Logan waking up and realize he slept in past the Power Rangers episode 
and then just walking around in the backyard kicking sand around and be like, you stupid piece of shit. <laughs> and then when you wake up, what happens? You slept in, you idiot. Now you don't know what happened in Digimon or in Power Rangers. You're a piece of garbage. No. I miss Jackie Chan Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to lighten things up, past this very somber subject, I, uh, I wanted to pose a question to everybody. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the best soda? Best soda? Oh, you, you, you fucking know me. You know what yeah, I'm going to fucking say. In particular. Pitch Black Mountain Dew. And I'm talking Pitch Black number two, the one that came back for the Halloween thing and never came back again, the sour version of it. I would suck three cocks right here, right now for that shit to come back. Well, but Logan. Bring it back, Mountain Dew. And I know there's three cocks in this room. <laughs> well, unless you bring some pitch black number two on I the table right now. I don't know if you know this, but we were all from a Make a Wish Foundation. <laughs> and we're here for you. We made a special call to the Mountain Dew company. <laughs> yeah, but pitch black, regular pitch black, which, okay, I'm calling bullshit on Pepsi Company for this. There was a campaign years ago where I fought tooth and nail to make pitch black a permanent flavor. It won. And it was a permanent flavor for all of like three fucking years, you sons of bitches. And then they pulled it off the fucking shelves. Mm -hmm. That's coming back in January yeah. oh, with is. a sugar-free version, the yes. real version, and an energy drink version. All and right, those okay. sons of bitches are going to fucking take it away from me again. Yeah, so this okay. is my goal you know, to you know fucking get the diabetes here yeah, <laughs> when yeah, it comes yeah. back. You know what? I would have to say, because like Mountain Dew is also my favorite. But I may have to go with the Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, it's so fucking good. Oh, but the no. thing is, is with fountain drinks, they're so fucking inconsistent with flavor, though, because you could be like, it could be great or it could be dog shit. So I don't put fountain drink versions on the table. That's fair. But Mountain Dew is the king of fucking flavors because it's every fucking month. And now Mountain Dew's come into the thing where Mountain Dew's like, all these action figure companies are doing like Walmart's exclusives and shit. Oh, well, you know what? We're going to do it as a soda company. Yo, Speedway Gas Station, what's your own flavor of Mountain Dew? Buffalo Wild Wings. You down? Yeah. <laughs> like, they're yeah. just like, and it's, like, oh, dude. it's so good. It's just like, why can't you put this in yeah. a can? As a Mountain Dew fa fan, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck a Speedway is. There's not one it's close like, to me. How the fuck? I don't want to go eat at place? Buffalo Wild Wings. You were making me go eat at Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings right now. Because I just want to drink this one. Okay, okay. Dakota? Uh, For me, well, real quick, just on the Mountain Dew thing, um, at Taco Bell, I'm not even talking about the Baja Blast. They 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 brought in this this one freezy that was a Mountain Dew. I I, I is it was it Live Wire? Live Wire is the orange one. No, okay. I'm, there's no the Sweet Lightning, but that's KFC. No, that's no, KFC. No, 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 it also no. has their own exclusive Mountain Dew. <laughs> no, no, they brought it. It was I stole the side. I remember drive through for that habit at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh um it was it was like yellow or something it was it was i drank that shit like it was water like oh dude i if if i could get if i could if i could do the three dick oh, trick it was the mountain okay. dew sangria blast one probably oh uh, that was another talk like that it was flavor it was some kind of electric yeah. some shit but it was it, oh, that was the, the electric one yeah. i would 100 oh, yeah. do the three dick trick to bring that back they were trick. they were doing that in the sangria blast i think at the same time yeah, but yeah no if, i know what he's talking about if i had to do sure. my if i had to if i had to pick like my choice i say keep it to canned can okay i would probably be do like a and w cream soda like that's i don't drink it like ever but every time i'm talking about say root beer and I was about it's to like a over it's it. a treat okay it's a treat every time i have it it just good. it just it's i'm still waiting for that alcoholic fucking mountain dew to hit fucking texas yeah, or blasts in there or oh, damn it having a bottled coke dude that sh that shit like hits different okay so. i like dark soda what did you say you're supposed brandon well, because I mentioned the Buffalo Wild Wings, but you can't get in cans. So if we're only sticking I fucking the wish cans, you could. <laughs> I might go with the, what is that? The blue one. The, is that Sweet Lightning? Voltage? voltage. Yeah, Voltage. I do. Yeah. I do. Bro, like I hate Voltage. Voltage, voltage yeah, is voltage. intense. Yeah. Yeah. Voltage is a flavor I got burned out on in high school. I literally didn't I even do, like the flavor of in high school. Well, I do. I do love Voltage. Like nowadays, I hate Classic Dew. I hate Code Red and I hate Voltage. We lost a lot of of good Mountain Dew flavors to Democracy. Like, Voltage was yeah. a winner of Democracy. Like, yeah. it was Voltage, what, Supernova? And it was and... against White. No, oh, White yeah, Out. it was the original one. It was, it was, well, no, White Out was against uh, the Lime flavor one or like, because White Out won. It was a permanent flavor till not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, Voltage was against Typhoon and yeah. Supernova. And both them lost, which was a shame because fucking Typhoon was the shit. Yeah. Uh, white out one against uh the lime flavored one, which was like you were always like you, I kind of thought Mountain Dew was a lime one, but it was just straight lime and it was yeah. weird tasting. And then it was another one with it. I can't remember. It was. I mean, we're talking about stuff that's like a decade. Yeah, time. but I mean, I participated in all these things. Mm. 
I mean, I when I lived with you is when I was doing the stuff for uh, Pitch Black and all that, where I was winning T-shirts oh, yeah. and all of that, and I was torn because I was like, "Fuck, I want this," but fucking Supernova's good too because oh, yeah. they brought them all back. Yeah, like, who's in permanent? Packed yeah, Pitch Black. Yeah, I, was, you know, I remember we we took like several days where we went from gas station to gas station searching out Pitch Black. Oh yeah, absolutely. But then, like, I've always thought Mountain Dew had some of the best like giveaway shit. Like when Halo Reach was coming out. Uh, they did this thing that was you, each cap you got got you a point oh, to God. enter. I had so many of those. No, cameras. this was the thing to enter into basically online auctions yeah. with Reach merchandise and Mountain Dew merchandise. Uh -huh. And like I, I had so many of these and I fucking I watched for a whole fucking day. Shit you not set at a fucking computer, had a day off from work, set at this fucking computer and just watched. And kept notes of like, when is the most active bidding time for these people? Because there's all these different auctions going on all at once. Yeah. And I found out that like four in the morning was the least amount of people bidding on stuff. So I just started hoarding all these points and set alarm, wake up at four in the morning and be like, okay, Halo Reach controllers, points, 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 different auctions. And I shit you not, they didn't tell you you won. Uh -huh. Shit just starts rolling in in the mail. And at this point, I already bought me a Reach controller because I didn't know I was going to get one. Yeah. Four Reach controllers show up in the fucking mail not including like t-shirts and other shit <laughs> to where i'm just like i gave one to jeremy mm. and then the other ones we took to walmart because walmart has that whole no receipt will give you walmart credit and i was like i don't want this and walmart was like here you go yeah. <laughs> it's just like i fucking loved all of them our original game fuel was life-changing yeah. i fucking went everywhere to find that back in the day and then a game fuel became this whole big thing where there's different flavors every year and none of that none of the game fuel flavors were ever as good as the original one in yeah, my opinion. Really not. And then they made Game Fuel into an energy drink that tasted like none of the past ones. Yep. It wasn't that great. And it was in that weird can that always went every time you opened it. Yep. But I just think Mountain Dew's marketing and everything has always been dope as shit. Yeah. The Halo 3 Game Fuel was peak game. So good. Dark oh, they, a lot of people don't know that uh there was remember the Dark Knight berry they had for the third Dark Knight or the yeah. the whatchamacallit? The it was the Bane movie. Uh, the Batman. Dark Batman Knight Rises. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they had Dark Knight or Dark Berry for that Dark Knight Berry, and that was fucking good too. There's so many good flavors that have just gone away. Yeah, and then we got trash flavors that live there forever. Like I fucking hate Livewire, and I, I'm I I don't mind Voltage, but I just can't stand Livewire. And like I said, it, it it's just not for me. Every once in a blue moon, I'll try Livewire. I know Jeremy's not our Jeremy, my brother-in-law Jeremy's favorite is Livewire, and I always talk shit on him for that because I just don't like orange sodas in general. So today I came to the realization that I think my absolute favorite soda is Cranberry Sprite. Comes around at Christmas time. I don't get your love for it. the only one it. that I'm like, I've got to get me one. Uh, I try all the new Mountain Dew flavors too when they come out at least once. But uh, the cranberry sprites I get every year when they you know come what? out. And I, love I these did try bastards. the new, uh, what was it? Fruitcake one? The, I like the fruitcake. Yeah, no, it's actually surprisingly yeah, good. Yeah, I actually really it was liked all right. the fruitcake. I liked it. I thought it was going to taste like shit. Honestly, like, I saw uh, fruitcake and I was like, oh, <laughs> but I tried it anyways. <laughs> yeah, it was the berry thunder I tried recently and that one I didn't. Where was that? Was what is that from? Uh, I found it at. Uh, what? Is, what is it an exclusive somewhere? I think so. It was at a, it was at, on MLK. Is it a Speedway? It might be on Speedway. You know, on MLK and Calder, the gas station right there. No, it was a shell. No, no, no. I didn't find it at the shell. I found it at the... The important part of this is neither of them fucking sent me a picture or got me a Mountain Dew. Hey, don't say them. I wasn't a part of this. You were sounding like you went on a fucking field trip together. I'm going to be 100% real. If I found, like, the rarest Mountain Dew flavor in the world, I would not get it for you. Because I would I would 110% assume I would give it to you and be like, bro, I already tried it. Yeah, that's fair. Because that, that is 100% the energy you give me every time I try to show you something. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> or or I get, you bro, get from that gas station? I already shared that in chat. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's uh, just like, I'm sorry. I just wanted to share something with my friend. I got it at the last station, gas station I was at. It was on the gas station of MLK and Calder, which is by your job. Talking about doxing people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe don't None triangulate. I live in Beaumont, so who am I doxing? Uh, you're triangulating <laughs> our position, <laughs> dog. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I went. He, his car, uh, the starter on his car went out the other yeah. night, and so I went to go pick him up, and I picked him up from a gas station, and he had one of those, and I thought he had just gotten it from that gas station, but I had not received one myself. Was it good? I did not yeah, do you dirty. I was honestly very disappointed. 
But you know where it is now. You can try it for yourself. As I will. I don't think the diabetic should be uh, consuming a bunch of Mountain Dew. Well, I don't think you should be running your fucking mouth right now. <laughs> Maybe you should just let him die, okay? <laughs> let him die happy. I fucking will at this point. Holy shit. I have said, uh, anybody that knows me, I consume and grow. I grow extremely hot peppers, but I consume, like, annoyingly hot shit on the regular. The only thing in this world that gives me heartburn ever is fucking regular Sprite. I cannot take, I can shit you not. I could take a, just a small gulp of a regular Sprite and I have heartburn almost fucking instantly. Oh, that's weird. I don't know what the fuck it is. The first time it happened to me, I thought I was fucking dying. That's <laughs> so weird. I was just like, I, it was it a fucking. I wonder if there's something in it you're allergic to. I've had this conversation with you before because the one time we went riding motorcycles and we stopped at McDonald's and I got I drank a Sprite and I was like, oh my God. Well, yeah, that's the extra spicy Sprite. No, no it was just regular Sprite. And no, it was no, McDonald's Sprite that. apparently hits different. No, it's I all Sprite. I don't eat McDonald's. Because I'm with him. Sprite has some amazing seasonal flavors. Oh, yeah. It does not matter. <laughs> yeah, you can't have fucking, it. I drink, uh, what was it? Was it LeBron that had Sprite? Yeah, LeBron. I, makes I, I, I no, fucking yeah. loved LeBron the Sprite, and I fucking crack one open, and I would be on the couch like, <laughs> Howie. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm getting shit talked to me because you you just ate like a fucking scorpion pepper in your fucking taco, and you're fine. And you're like, what, Sprite's crippling you? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like an allergy. I don't know, man. Spicy things don't really relate to heartburn. Like the, yeah. the things that give me heartburn are never spicy. Fucking foods. Sprite. I'm probably like the only person crazy. in the world that Sprite kicks the shit out of. Make the problem. Meanwhile, work. normally don't people drink Sprite to fucking calm their stomachs? Yeah. Yeah. You're just built different. But dude. they're not doing it to stop heartburn. They're doing it because they're fe it's it's the lemon, the citrus, and it helps with nausea. I'll just bro straight citrus. up. I always thought it was just the expelling of gas, like when you just drink like a really bubbly drink and you just burp oh, a no, lot. You were adding gas. With this is a weird episode. <laughs> Yeah, we've yeah. we kind of bounced around a lot. Um, but you know what we haven't done this episode? Fight about something? We talked about movies. Oh, I thought this was going to turn into a fight, but everyone. Oh, this was your hot take. Cool. This was. was your hot take. You know what? I want to fight about I something. I was gonna say Sprite, and then people were gonna start yelling at me. I don't need to fight about this. something. No, I want to. So much. No, no, I want to oh, fight about something. Life. I want to fight about something specifically with you, Matt. Okay. Ooh, okay. Specifically okay. with you. Okay. So I mentioned this earlier about about the way we conduct ourselves in chat. I'm just like, I want to show Logan something, and he's like, Bro, I shared that in chat like three days ago, and it's like, Well, fuck. I'm sorry. I didn't remember. I can't help and then, that I live with my finger on and the pulse, Dakota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he gets all upset with me because he's like, I already shared that. No, no, no. Wait. Say, no, no. He can't say he lives with his finger on the culture pulse. Culture-wise. When he doesn't know any of the new Zoomer language. Pop culture-wise. I'm not hip. I just know all the nerd shit. No, 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 no. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'll be like, oh, dude, this is like a Mountain Dew thing. I'm going to share it with Logan. Logan's like, fucking seen it and shared it. What the fuck? But this motherfucker across the table from me, okay? Matt, I swear to God, I I have stopped sharing things with most of the, the of my friend group because ever since the discovery of the internet, I'm like, yo, you'd find this interesting. Check this shit out. And all I get is seeing it. Yeah, I know. No, no discussion. Nothing. No, there's no discussion afterwards. I can share something with another one of my friends who I like. I routinely share something with, and he's just like. Oh yeah, I've seen that. And blah 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 blah. And we can have a discussion about it. But this motherfucker and another one of our friends named Larry, I don't talk about shit with them anymore because every fucking time I try, they're like, Yeah, I've seen it. It's like, why didn't you share it with me if you saw it first? Right? Well, no, actually. Oh god. He got your fight. You want us to talk about shit in the chat? A lot of the times, I do fucking share it. And then three days later, you or somebody else comes in showing the thing that I fucking shared because nobody looked at yeah, it you when get, I fucking you get posted it. You get upset because you share a TikTok and then no one watches it. I, don't, I want to watch Anybody it. post a video in that chat, I'm not clicking on but it. But that's the thing, though, is like when I specifically <laughs> tag you, I tag your name and I'm like, Matt, chat check this out. See if it's safe to watch a video. Yeah, yeah. Learn. This is really cool. I want to share this specifically with you because I think it's special to you. And you're just like, yeah, whatever. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, and I'll fucking tag you in a post with a video and I'll get nothing but goddamn radio silence. That's not true. You don't ever tag me in anything. Yeah, that's ever. not true. I tag you in stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the sound of people fighting for the sake of fighting. That's what I'm saying. I wanted to fight about something. Matt wanted to fight and he didn't get it. I wanted to fight. I specifically wanted to fight about this. I am so fucking frustrated about that. Because I'm like, what kind of, 
Have a conversation, goddamn you. I've had so much stuff I wanted to share in the chat, and I just didn't because I knew what, nobody would fucking he, answer. Because he's Stop lying. being a prima donna. Just just tag somebody that you think would, would hey, find you know, it interesting. Why don't you look at something whenever it gets announced before you fucking share it instead of several days later? What do you mean? Because I, I'm not like on a news website or some shit. I just wait for it to come across social media, and I'm just like, I wonder if anybody's seen this. I think this is cool. And everybody's like, yeah, whatever, I've seen it. Okay, do you want to have a discussion? you want to talk about it? No. Mm -mm. Nah, I got nothing to talk about on it. I've seen it. I have no opinions. That's not true. You just never prompt me with a question prompt. You're never like, what's your opinion on this, Matt? That's right, you shake your head. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Conversation's a two-way street. Yeah, for real. I'm just like, hey, check this out. And you're just like, yeah. What do you want me to do? Well, that being said, everybody out there in spooky <laughs> world, um, sorry for the lack of spooky, um, no, but things need to be talked about. No, I'm not. I, I love talking about pop culture, and yes. uh, I will talk about Power Rangers till I am blue in the motherfucking face. Well, speaking of spooky stuff, oh god, damn uh, it. I saw I, uh, I saw a TikTok for a Christmas horror film that is coming out either is out already or coming out in the next few days. Uh, and it's Santa Slays. Yes, Santa Slays. Yes. That's that's it. That's the name. It's the one where he goes. Be, he goes to beat the fucking kidnappers. No, 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 no. no, no. That Santa is Slays is about a Santa Claus robot going uh, rogue. Yeah. Oh, I actually was talking about that, and violent, I, I that's Violent Night. I, that's hard. I accidentally yeah. just guessed the title of that movie correctly. I mean, it's kind of on the nose. Oh, yeah, it's a little I, bit. I, I want to watch Violent. Night. I, I was actually talking about Violent Night. I thought that movie was called Santa Slays. Yeah, yeah where Santa just well, I was a beat the Violet shit Night out of people. Well, but that's not really a spooky film. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Santa Slays is coming out. I'm looking forward to checking that out uh, and seeing. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make a point. I fucked up with. With Halloween, I'm gonna make a point to watch several Christmas films this uh, holiday season, uh, culminating in what I think is the best Christmas film of all time, Jingle All the Way, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah. See, everyone here was like, he's gonna say Die Hard, and of course he fucking no, says Jingle no. All the Way. No, 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 the audience was going to think Die Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, his dumbass says Jingle All the Way. His dumbass. Excuse you, that's a fucking classic. Thank you very much. Yeah. Don't you so back the fuck paste. off, dude. Paste. Sinbad is in that movie, and you cannot tell me he is entertaining. Ah, oh, hey, fucking excuse you. He did He did just fine. Fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger carried the movie anyway. I hate yep. Christmas movies. Yeah, just, yep. <laughs> you hate Christmas movies? Yeah, except for, like, Krampus. Krampus is good. Oh, you're such I'll a Grinch. I fucking hate Christmas. I hate December. I I like Christmas. It's, he, he I don't like it's emotionally. You just hate being happy. I don't. That's it. That's why I surround myself with action figures because I I hate being happy. I don't like. Maybe it's the realization that the action figures yeah. haven't made you happy. I don't like. And so it's the forever pursuit of trying to find the one that will. Yeah. Your life set. Really your life's a big coke. We got all the chance to read the books in the world. And his glasses <laughs> fall off and break. Right. Yeah. That's that's not fair. <laughs> that, and all the time in the world. <laughs> that's not fair. I don't like Christmas itself, like Christmas Day and everything that you have to, all the all the stuff you have to do for that. But I love Christmas season. I love all the imagery of snow and lights. No, I love Christmas. Nice. I love literally every part of Christmas. Every part, even the stress of it. I I I love it. It's just I live and breathe for that that time of year because it's just so warm and yeah. And they're, they're like, supposed I wanna, to be. I want to live in like a Christmas town where. It snows and there's a bunch of lights set up. Yeah, that, that would be ideal for me. Nightmarish. Nah. Get, snow. get some hot chocolate and look at the. Well, light. you had to live with it. We did. We've never had to live. We've only in Texas. We we get it maybe once every blue moon. And it's in January. Yeah, when it happens. once every three years or ten years or so. Yeah, like you in Indiana, you were buried in that shit. And Germany. Oh yeah, I forgot you lived in Germany. Yeah, I'd be fine with it. I'd be happy. No, because if you live in a place where snow is normal, then all your workplaces and everything yeah, normalize it. And it's just like, hey, we had a guy casually go sprinkle some salt on the road. I know it's a blizzard, but get to fucking work. Yeah. You no, know, it stops being as magical things. when you have to live with it every so day. So when we did have the big ice storm, uh, it was funny. I did go to one woman's house when I was still a technician. And she's like, oh, you're good to come up my porch. I went ahead and poured salt on it. She just poured Morton salt. 
<laughs> oh my god. Instead of rock salt. So you busted your ass, right? Oh, I didn't go up there because I knew better. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I mean, I don't blame her. I probably would be just as dumb to just like pour like. Well, no, I wouldn't. Uh, have, all salt is the same. Big freeze happened here, destroying their windshields because they would go outside and fucking throw <laughs> boiling ass oh, hot water God, on their windshields, yeah. and the shit would just shatter. <laughs> God. But I mean, like, I don't blame anybody because like you're not prepared for that shit. I I know I got I got frozen at work. Um. Because, like, I, I didn't want to drive on icy-ass roads. And, like, my boss, my boss, like, I had to drive, like, probably, like, 15 miles an hour to get home over the highway. And, like, everyone else was taking it just as slow. And I was still just sliding every time I'd hit the brakes. But, like, my boss, when I got home, he goes, you think you're going you're, you're gonna to make it back to work tonight? And I was just like, no. No, I'm not. <laughs> Absolutely not. In the dark? Driving in the dark when it's all icy and shit? You're out of your mind. No, I'm not well, there's coming nothing back. Like driving in the on the road in a bunch of snow and everything, and you seeing a stoplight ahead of you, and you try to stop way prematurely, and you still slide right through that bitch while it's red. And just you had stopped like a mile back, and you're still just just solidly coasting through a red light, and just praying uh, so nobody's my, coming from the other side. And a cop, pull, my luck would be cops don't even give a fuck. Yeah, a cop pulls you over, and you're like, look, I I hit the brakes. I didn't consent to keep it's, going. It's, you know what? You still ran a red light. It's, Failure to good, maintain speed. It's yeah, so, that dude comes across to like try to pull you over, and he just keeps sliding. It's so fucking icy in northern Indiana that you're watching fucking Amish horse-drawn buggies fucking drifting like they're in fucking Fast and the Furious. <laughs> it's fucking gnarly. I slid through a uh, a stoplight once, uh, not in snow, but on the motorcycle. Uh, That's fun. When I was still very fresh to driving motorcycles, I was trying to get through a light. The light turns yellow. But I was also like in that awkward distance to stopping on like a, a road that had like a 65 mile per hour. Well, that's it. I was like, all right, committing. That was the shortest yellow light I ever had. And sitting at that intersection was a cop. Nice. So I do just, I want this cop to see me run a red light or do I want to see this this cop see me eat shit? Yeah. So I just I hit I hit the brake and I slide through the intersection and I was like, well. Let me make it easy on him, and I pull into a gas station parking lot so that he can roll up on me and give me a ticket, or if I'm lucky, a warning. He just fucks off. Yeah, yeah, he just no. Leaves. That cop didn't want to give a ticket to a man that just shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not only were you panicking because of the light, the fact that you couldn't stop, and also there was a cop. He was like, you know what? I think that's punishment enough. He's <laughs> yeah. not going to do that again. Oh, man. That being said, it is late. I want to go home. Mm -hmm. This is how you so, want to wrap it up? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay. We, uh, in a true Team Tejas fashion, we have been sitting in this studio recording for many hours before we actually started to record because we don't shut the fuck up to the dismay of two very disgruntled uh, reviewers on Apple Podcast. So if you would like to tell us about how we don't shut the fuck up, email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. Or don't. And if you have any complaints about my performance on the podcast, be free to leave in the comments. I don't watch the show. I have no idea what how this is going to do. <laughs> but this has been Logan. Been Matt. Bose. And I'm Dakota for my last appearance on the podcast. First and only appearance on this podcast. Good night, everyone. And may the power protect you. Always. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, follow us on our social media, Twitter at T-U-S-O-P-P-O-D or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal and Facebook, the United States of Paranormal. If you have a place that you'd like us to look into, or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. <laughs>